Okay, Freeman, let's talk mirrors and lenses. Optics questions can be really tricky on the MCAT because there are a lot of specific terms, definitions, and finicky relationships that you need to learn. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my personal lenses and mirrors study guide, and we're gonna build it together step by step. All right, so we've just got a blank page here. We're gonna zoom in and draw all the details about lenses and mirrors that you'll need to know for test day. We're gonna start with mirrors. Now, mirrors is an area that's less likely to show up on test day, still important to contrast with lenses, but just know that you'll get less questions on them, so maybe focus a little less in your prep. All right, so we're gonna start with mirrors off to the left. So mirrors reflect light, right? They do not refract it. Any light rays that come in bounce right back off. So here's my light ray coming in, and they're just gonna bounce off reflect right back the way they came. Now, depending on the shape of the mirror, the curve of the mirror, you are going to get two different types of bouncing or reflecting. So for our mirror on the left here, which is known as a concave mirror in terms of shape, right? So we're gonna draw this, we're gonna draw everything concave in purple, all right? So concave is in terms of shape is also what's known as a converging system. All right, converging system. That means that when light comes in to a concave mirror, like so, the light rays are going to converge as they reflect. They're gonna come in towards each other as they reflect to a focal point. So that is a converging concave mirror. Now the other type of mirror we're gonna draw in green is a convex mirror. Concave because it looks like a cave, convex, right, kind of belly shaped. And a convex mirror has diverging rays. Diverging meaning they separate as they reflect. So again, rays are coming in and in a diverging mirror or diverging system, those light rays are going to go further away from each other as they reflect. Now, when we get to lenses in a moment, I want you to see that these terms do not line up exactly with lenses. So concave converging mirrors, convex diverging mirrors. It's gonna be different for our lenses. So concave and convex describe the shape, shape, and diverging and converging describe the rays, right? The light rays, all right? Now, other things to know about mirrors, um, again, they're less likely to be tested, but still may come up with some math. So we're going to just draw a little mirror system here. We'll go ahead and draw a concave mirror, like so. All mirrors and lenses have a focal length. This is a characteristic of the mirror and the lens. So there's no consistent focal length, right? It's going to be specific to this specific mirror. Um, and so they'll give it to you in a question if they want you to calculate it, or you'll ask to solve for it with the equations that we're going to go through. For a mirror, there's also something called the center of curvature, or C. The center of curvature to the center of the mirror is known as the radius of curvature, right? If we were to draw the mirror as a full circle, right, radius of curvature. And our calculations here that are relevant for mirrors are that 2R, R meaning the radius of curvature, is equal to one over focal length. All right, so two R equals one over focal length or one half focal length equals R. We're gonna get back to these two equations after we finish talking about our lenses. All right, so that's mirrors. Now let's go over to our lenses side of our notes. Unlike mirrors, in a lens, light is going all the way through and refracting through the other side. So in a lens, our shape either looks like this, which is a convex shape, right? Imagine two convex mirrors put together, right? That kind of belly shape. And we have diverging mirrors. I'll have to draw these versus draw a little shape. And this is a concave lens, which are very much like two concave mirrors pushed together, right? So this is again describing the shape of the lens. Now here's the part where it gets a little tricky. Unlike mirrors, a convex lens is a converging system. So see how they're kind of flipped? So in this case, because the light rays are going through, through, they're kind of, kind of uno reversing, and we end up converging on the other side of the lens. In contrast, the concave lens is a diverging 
diverging lens, where when the rays come in, they actually diverge away from each other. Now for both a convex and a concave system, the image is formed on the other side of the lens versus being reflected back on the same side as the object. So when we draw the system, I'll go ahead and draw a converging system here and a diverging system here. We have our object, which is usually upright, and we have a focal length. So this is our object object. We have our focal length. Again, this is a characteristic of the lens. It's on both sides. So we have focal length, focal length. Most of the time, the focal length is smaller than the object distance. That's what we're drawing here. Where the image is formed and in which direction, inverted or upright, depends on the relationship between the focal length, the object distance, and the characteristics of the lenses. So now let's get into some rules. By definition, a converging lens has a focal length that is positive, all right? So it's going to be a positive value, just a characteristic of the lens because it's a converging lens. A diverging lens, right, or concave lens, by definition, will have a focal length that is negative. Again, characteristic of the lens. Now, the DO for both systems is going to be positive pretty much all the time on MCAT questions. So our object distance which is our distance between our object and the center of our lens, DO, is going to be positive. So now we can actually determine whether our image distance is positive or negative by using the thin lens equation. So let's go ahead to the center here because the thin lens equation can actually be used for mirrors too. Uh, it just tends to not be. So let's go ahead to the center so we can put the thin lens equation right in the center here. So our thin lens equation is 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. It's a reciprocal equation. And now I'm going to tell you these rules. You can trust me on it or you can do the math to prove it. Because our focal length is positive here and our DO is positive here, as long as DO is greater than the focal length, as long as our distance of our object is greater than our focal length, di will be positive for a converging lens. And again, you can do that math to try it out with the thin lens equation to prove it, but this is always going to be true. For our diverging lens, it's going to be the opposite relationship. As long as do is greater than f, di will be negative because of our negative focal length. All right, as long as, again, do is greater than f. So why do we care whether the image distance is positive or a negative value? Because that value and the magnitude of the image distance lets us know important things about what image is formed, like whether it's real or virtual, or upright or inverted, or enlarged or reduced. We can determine all of that from the sign value of the image distance, and we can use nice shortcuts and tricks to do this without having to do calculations every time. Before we get into all that, I'm Amanda Bram, and I've been coaching students through their MCAT journeys since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content, test-taking strategies, and mental fitness tips that will help you perform your best on test day. And if you'd like more interactive, in-depth lessons on topics like these, please check out the link in the caption below, which will take you to register for my next MCAT course. All right, let's finish out this study guide with what types of images are formed with which type of lens. So here's our first set of rules. If DI is positive, this is a real image. All right, real and virtuals are just terms that we use to describe the types of images that are formed. For a positive image distance, that means it's a real image. For a negative distance image, that's a virtual image. So by definition, our convex converging lens produces real images. And our diverging lens, by definition, produces virtual images. Now to get to our next set of characteristics, we need one more equation. We need our magnification equation. Magnification is equal to negative di over do. So magnification, how big or how small something is. And it's equal to negative the image distance over the object distance. So that's our equation. Now let's get into our rules. 
if the magnification is positive, then the image is upright. If the magnification is negative, then the image is inverted. So check it out. If we have a negative DI like we have here, a negative times a negative is a positive. So we're going to have an upright image. So our diverging lens produces a virtual upright image. And it will always form a virtual upright image because in order for it to be upright, the DI needs to be negative, which means it needs to be virtual. So here's your first mnemonic, UV goes together, like UV light, all right? So U and V go together. If it's upright, it's gotta be virtual and vice versa. And both of those apply to a diverging or concave lens. Now for our converging lens, we can see that we have a positive DI, which if we plug into our equation here would give us a negative value. And so therefore we'll have an inverted image. So real images always also are inverted images which again, we can use a mnemonic, IR, like infrared light. So IR goes together and UV goes together. It will always be true on MCAT style questions. Finally, if the absolute value, so it doesn't matter positive or negative, if the absolute value of M is greater than one, the image is enlarged. And this should make sense conceptually because our distances are proportional to our heights. So if our image distance is bigger than our object distance, we're going to get a value of greater than one, which also means that we're going to get an image that is bigger than our object. So if our absolute value of the magnification is greater than one, that just means, hey, our image distance was bigger than our object distance. Therefore, our image itself is bigger than our object. On the other side, if our absolute value of M is less than one, it's going to be reduced. And again, that's because our heights of our images and our objects are proportional to our distances. So our final equation here, we're gonna write off in the corner is the ratio of the heights, HI, image height over HO, object height, is equal to the distance of the image over the distance of the object. All this means conceptually, is that if you're further away from the lens, you're also going to be taller, all right? So the further away you are in distance from the lens, the taller our object or our image is, and it's proportional, all right? It's directly proportional. The bigger the distance of the object, the bigger the distance of the image, the bigger the height of the image. The mnemonic for this equation is hi ho di do, all right? So it's an easy-ish one to remember, hi ho di do, and just know that our heights are proportional to our distances. Again, as a reminder, here are our mirror equations with our radius of curvature that is only used for mirrors. However, we can substitute in this equation to our thin lens equation. Thin lens equation, TLE, up here as well. All right, and as you can see, we now have our finished study guide. Notice there's not a lot of words or explanations here. That's because it is so important to use the study guide as a trigger to get you to think through the concepts that we just talked about in this video. Please feel free to watch it again, try to draw it from memory until these concepts are locked down and you're ready to move on to math problems. All right, I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough of mirrors and lenses on the MCAT. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your pre-med community. Remember, studying for the MCAT can be hard and stressful, and sometimes we all need a little help. Thanks so much and happy studying.